Hello everybody, um, Blaze Collie here. I made a video a while back, I'll post it in the description below, maybe an overlay right here, about um, how to be a better fursuit photographer. Now, I take the stance of you can point and click and that's, that's cool and everything, but um, when you produce a, uh, uh, a JPEG, uh, it can come flat if it comes from a DSLR. It has some um, algorithms that it runs through to make it look nice, but I, I'm going to show you guys how I edit my photos. I shoot exclusively in RAW, sometimes RAW plus JPEG if I'm on the fly and want to post things immediately. But, all in all, um, I just got back from MFF. And I wanted to show you guys um, how I go about editing photos. So, as you can see, I've already done a couple of these. All the ones that are flagged, they're marked as as edited. So as you can see here, I have Peach. Um, he's a doggo, and he his photo I think turned out really, really well. Here's another one of it. And you can see this is what it looks like when it's unedited, raw, and this is what it looks like when it's it's edited. So, um, again, another one here, um, and I can show you the before and after. It's really washed out, it's really nice and vibrant, it's been pulled through. That's what I'm trying to go for on this one. Alright, so I'm going to show you based on this one here. Um, go back to this original. The first thing that I do is I go over to Lightroom's general presets. I use Lightroom for this. Some of you might use some other ones, but Lightroom is pretty much a tried and true for uh, photography. And when I do fursuit photography, this is what I'm doing. And I, so I go punch, uh, medium contrast curve. What that does is it pops them to the front, and um, uh, and it, it kind of darkens out. And, and kind of accentuates the contrast so we get him to pop forward. Alright, the next thing I do, only because sometimes it works well and it gives me kind of a foundation for me to work with, is I click over to Auto Tone. Sometimes, sometimes, um, let's say we'll go here, um, we want to click Auto Tone on this guy. Just, right? It might darken it too much after all is said and done, but an example I'll show you once I don't like using it too much but anyway this one doesn't seem to be doing so bad it seems to do approximately what I'm looking for but it's still not quite right something about it isn't still quite there and so the next thing I do is I try to, to refine the white balance a little bit more you can see that there's a cherry picker oh it doesn't overlay but anyway there's a cherry picker on my screen um, and it can show you coloration so I'm changing the color just a little bit and color is an interesting thing it's definitely something that to pay attention to so when I'm doing this um, I I also want to think about what mood am I setting because you can go a little bit colder and that will completely change the feel of what you're trying to go after or you can go a little warmer and it becomes a more inviting, more open. Um, and so, you know, moving on from this, give me one moment here. I have someone annoying the crap out of me on Telegram. I'm gonna stop it. There we go. All right. So, moving on. We just finished the. Uh, white balance, clicking on that sets it so that we get what white should be because sometimes your camera picks up white as more of a yellow tinge based off of exterior lighting and stuff and it never quite looks like the photo you were expecting to get from the scene that you saw with your own eyes. So the next thing I do is I generally crank up the saturation because I want I want this this scene to be colorful and bright so I'm gonna bring that up when you do stuff like that 
and you're cranking up the by cranking up the uh, contrast just a little bit as well. Um, now I'm going to show you cranking up the contrast will darken certain things. Dropping it can lighten it. So what I'm trying to do in this scenario is just give things definition. Stuff like the fur will get some definition by increasing that. But one of the things worth noting is that every time you do something, just subtly, uh, the it, it affects everything else uh, cumulatively over time. So. Um, I want to give it a little bit more brightness. I'm focusing on the hair right here and all of the highlights. So giving it just a little bit of that. And then if I brought up the highlights just to see what it does, we have a brighter pause, brighter tail. So going to a zero highlight on this one looks a little bit blown out. So if I drop that we get kind of a, more of a, dark, it gets a little darker in the head. So you see what I mean by a little bit does a lot? So if we brought down the, sh bring up the shadows, we now have um, a slightly brighter face, and we can define lines on the, the fur a little bit by dropping the blacks down. We can make it feel a little more rich and inviting by cranking up the whites a little more. So now we have this very bright and open feel to this this photo, um, and this is where a lot of people want to. They would they would be okay. I'm fine. We're gonna move on with this. But I go a little bit further. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down to the color areas. You can see luminance is how bright something is. So we're going to go bring up the greens or I can drop the greens down. Um, the greens are actually pretty much where I'd like to see them. I'm going to crank up the, the, that just a little bit. Uh, actually, dropping that down for now, heading over to saturation and bringing up the greens so that they're a little bit more lime colored. All right, his nose is also... Um, and his tongue is also something I want to emphasize as well. So we're going to magenta and see what happens with the nose. Cranking the magenta all the way over, you can see that the nose gets really rich. And going back, it changes that. So selectively taking this photo and kind of cranking up the color on the photo and giving it some luminance. Uh, dropping and just seeing what looks kind of right. Based on the lighting, you don't want to overblow it. Um, so I think a, slightly dr a slight drop in luminance is probably a good idea in this case. All right, but wait, we also have a blue here and we have an orange here. So I'm gonna increase the saturation on the orange just a little bit. You can see also, because the background is orange, if I drop the orange, a lot of the color washes out, so you want to be very careful with colors that you're selecting. So only only needs a little bit, because if you add too much, then the background starts to draw your focus. So you want to keep the focus on the character, so I bring him up just a little bit, and then I'm going to go to the blue next. And you can see that the blue doesn't change a whole lot, except in extreme situations, so that's aqua. Now we're going to go to blue. The blue doesn't do almost anything. So we're going to do a mix of both of these, cranking that up on both scales. But wait, there's more. So I could stop here. I think this would be a winning photo in a lot of scenarios. But the eyes are a bit too dark for my cases. In this photo, I didn't do anything with the eyes. You can see they're, they're kind of the same. The photo actually is edited very roughly. Um, uh, no pun intended, the same coloration's a little bit too bright for me right there, so we're going to actually go back down and we're going to drop that magenta, the luminance on the magenta again. Uh, no, 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 it's not the luminance this time, it's the saturation. It's a little high on the saturation. You can kind of see the, the fringing along the edges. Okay, so 
What I am interested in are the eyes. There's a tool here. It's a selective mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this circle roughly this in the eyelets of this the, the eyeglasses. I'm going to invert the filter so that it focuses just on the inside, not the outside of it. And I'm going to bring up the shadows. I'm going to bring up a lot, actually. I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm trying to match this here and this level here with how that comes across. I think that's... Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing again on this eye, except this eye is a little different, it's a little more oval, and drop it down in this area here. The key thing with fursuit photos is if you can get both eyes in the photo, the photo looks tremendously better. So try to keep that in mind when you are editing and taking photos. The best photos have both eyes facing forward with some some bendiness to them. All right, so now that we did that, invert the mask again. I'm gonna crank up the shadows. That might be all it needs to some degree. I'm actually gonna bring that a bit out because it, it feathers itself in. So you wanna make it slightly wider than that. And then bring up the exposure on that one too. Bring that in. Okay. His eyes a little bit too bright in my opinion. It looks a bit too artificial, so we're gonna go back to that and we're gonna drop it down. There's a lot of fine tuning involved in this. But it does make a huge difference, so let's go back. The light is still quite not right. I need to move it over. Shadows a little bit. Turn that off. That's better. I think that looks pretty good. Eyes are bright. One of the things that they always say is eyes are a window to the soul. The eyes kind of drive characters. If if you don't have like think about cartoon characters. Even when they're static, they blink so that they know that they're alive. If you have a character with really dark eyes, it's a really good idea to brighten the eyes to make the character pop a little bit more. Now, for the reveal. I'm going to show you guys what it looked like before, and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like now. Before. After. This is one of the key things in photography. You can shoot a photo, you can make it look really nice, but there's sometimes a need for uh, editing and sometimes severe editing. Um, I will show you guys what that looks like now if I can find it for you really quickly. Uh, I've done some serious editing on some of these photos. Let's go filters to flag. If you go to a flag filter, I can see all of the ones that I've edited uh, and produced already. Now, some of these have some serious editing to them. Oh, I know a good one. Let's go back to the library. Click over, drag the flagged. Alright. I took a photo of some birds. We're gonna develop that. This is the before. And this is the after. See how this is all washed out? And now it's more defined and has some some style to it. Notice how this is really dark in here, not really defined, there's no light. Notice how it's very um, almost too bright on, on this on the bird's face here. Cor it's a Corbin, I Corbin, I think. Um, but here it's kind of almost picturesque. So I'm gonna show you what that what that looked like. 
go back over here. I selected them as a whole and did the selective editing on the faces. This is some extreme editing um, to save a photo that otherwise would have just kind of, in my opinion, looked very bleh. But the reality is that if I didn't do that, it would not have been nearly as nice. I wonder... Uh, let's see. It would be really nice if I could show you this without screwing it up, but I don't want to mess up what I've already done because it took a really long time. But as you can see from what I did with the others, um, and I've done some others as well, we had some selective... See this? How this is very popped forward. It's almost, almost feels very fake because of how crisp and clean this is around around their heads but this also had a pretty large edit to it I focused on them and because of this it popped them away from the background which had its own level of editing allowing me to to focus on on creating a great photo that's almost postcard-esque um, so yeah that's been your general editing uh, uh, lesson and tutorial for the day. Let me know if you have any questions.